Hey everyone, I'm Major Batman at Linkira Studios. Today I'm going to show you a new tool that I've been playing with called Dino Fracture, and this is what it does. Pretty cool. On collision destruction. Pretty neat. So I'm going to walk you through how to use the tool and how to set up this uh, crane to make it work. So let's get started. Okay, so if you haven't seen this tool, it's called Dino Fracture. And what it allows you to do is it basically it on a collision or on a click, it makes stuff break apart just like that. So that's pretty neat. This is the web page. I just bought it the other day uh, for $20. Uh, it seemed like it was going to do its work pretty well so i purchased it right that's what we do and i was i ran into a couple issues and i thought it'd be best if i just showed you how because i, I think you can make use of it okay so let's open up a scene i've imported imported dino fracture and i've also imported cinti assets polygon construction okay so first thing we got to do we create an empty and let's name this um, fracture parent the reason why is the way the tool works is it hides your at your initial mess creates a duplicate based upon a bunch of fractures and so it needs a place to put all those child objects underneath so that's why we do it. in addition we need to add a fracture engine to it not 100% positive, but I think this is what it what it does. Okay, so we're going to add we're just going to add a concrete pillar. Just something something basic. Oh, that's a little too short. All right, and let's scale that up a bit. All right, not bad, right? Okay, so the first things first, we have the box collider, we have the mesh renderer. We're going to want to add a runtime fracture geometry. First I'll show you runtime and then I'll show you the pre-fractured. So add the runtime fracture geometry onto it. The inside material is what, what it looks like on the other side so you can really select anything um, nice part is it comes with some basic materials so you can pick like the stone too might work well for this All right the fracture template is straight from the asset so we type in fracture it comes with these different fracture pieces and I think the standard fracture piece seems to work but you can play around and pick pick these other ones like these glass fracture planes if you mess with the demo it has different ones so let's pick standard fracture piece Right, the pieces parent. This is what we just created, that fracture parent. So let's add that there. Runtime, number of fracture pieces is five. And then what we're going to add is a rigid body. And we need to up the scale a bit. So maybe something like 250, something like 500 pounds. Um, another tool said to change this to continuous dynamic. So let's, let's just do that. Sorry, another tutorial. And then we're going to add a another one called Fracture on Click. And this is just a test to make sure it works. So if you press play, and click it. Oh, see? So one thing, one issue that I did run into was this, this error right here that says, not allowed to access the mesh. It is readable, it's false. Read, write must be enabled in import settings. So let's fix that. So we grabbed a pillar number three. And so if we go in, you need to go into the models folder and then look for the pillar number three. This concrete pillar number three. And then you go over here and you select, my eyes are messed up, and read, write, enabled right here. So you just select and then apply. And you'll probably have to do this for all of them that you'll do. Um, any object that you do this for. And now if we press play, 
and we click it, it breaks apart. Okay, that was pretty cool. And then you see how the inside of of that um, is like kind of a, a white whitish color. So we could even change that. So let's, we can make it a wood color or a black color or really whatever we want. We'll keep it as is. All right, so that is all you need to do to get this to work really well, right? But the thing is, we don't really want to do it on fracture on click. We want to do it on fracture on collision. And then it has a couple a couple variables, force threshold. So let's up that maybe to like 0.5. So it doesn't just break once it starts. And so we need an object to touch it, an object to hit it. So I'm going to sh go, you th go through this. Um, it should be rather quick, but... Um, I think it's also kind of interesting. So uh, you know, you know me. I like configurable joints. So let's add this crane to the picture. All right. And if we open it up, it has this crane top and the crane arm. So if we move this, oops, set it to the pivot point, we can move it up. And then this crane arm too, we can move it forward a little bit if we want. And then we have this piece here, and then we have a hook, and then these wires. So what we're going to do is we're going to another in the construction tool to, um, in the construction pack. We have this wrecking ball. We have two wrecking balls actually. But we'll grab the basic wrecking ball, and we're going to put it underneath this hook, and we'll bring it down so it's lined up where it wants to be. Now that probably is not going to hit, so let's just adjust it a little bit. And then underneath it has the wrecking ball cable, and so we can up the Y so it's a little longer, just, just like so. And then go grab it and then put it back down. So now it looks like where we want it. So I'm doing this just to kind of like pre-start it so I don't have to okay so so what I'm having to do is I am adjusting ever so slightly so it starts like that and with the right motion it's just going to swing and hit it okay so let's get rid of this wire we can just disable it we're going to need to create an empty and we're just going to put it underneath the hook as well and so this is going to be sorry let's let's create it as a child of that one and this is going to be the attach point okay so with that, we're going to add a rigid body, make it is kinematic, easy enough. Then on the cable, we're going to add a configurable joint, it adds the rigid body already. Then the rigid body is going to connect to is this attach point. Then we're going to lock the X, Y, and Z motion on the cable. Then on the wrecking ball, we're going to add a rigid body as well. We're going to up the mass here to like 100. Um, we can make this continuous dynamic as well. And then we're going to add a fixed joint where it's going to be attached to this cable. And I think that will do it. And so now, let's look here. We, we have a runtime fracture geometry, fracture on collision. So if you press play, Okay, that was pretty cool. I think it was cool. Um, oh, the hook's still there. So let's. We're gonna need to move this, change the parent of that, and undo the hook. I thought that was pretty neat. Okay, so one thing that we can do is you can up the number of fracture pieces. So let's up that to 20 and let's see what it does.
So see how it kind of took a second? And I don't know what happened there where it kind of bugged out. Let's try that again. My thing's bugging out on me. Um, oh, that's why. This attach point is no longer valid. Okay, so we put that up. Now it's attached to the top. Then it breaks. So it's kind of like a, a delay of a second. And what that is, is the pre-calculation. That, that process is a little CPU intensive. So the way around that, when you want something that looks that had that many fractures is to, to use what's called the um, the pre um, so I'm going to disable this and we're going to change this from runtime fracture geometry okay let's remove this component and then we're going to go to pre fracture geometry so the same thing, where you pick the material. Um, we pick the template. We pick the, the transform, we'll pick the fr fracture parent as well. It's up to pieces. And then what we'll do is we'll create the fractures. And I don't, I don't know what the saving does, but it basically creates all the objects here under this fracture parent see how so a bunch of them which is kind of cool and so exactly what it does is each one of those gets replaced with, with this object so let's add the fracture on collision back up the force threshold and let's press play and now there's no delay and that looks pretty cool and that's it. That was Dino Fracture for you guys. So if you liked it, um, click the link below um, to purchase it. I think it's a, a pretty cool asset and really easy to use. Something that I think will definitely spice up your games. So I hope you have a great rest of your day. Uh, this is Major Batman Link Hero Studios.